Okay, welcome to two trivial and important elements of your research paper. Trivial and important, uh, that seems contradictory, but uh, actually they go together in this case. Uh, they're trivial in that they seem like minor requirements, but they're important in that uh, if you do them and understand how to do them, then you're learning something very, very important and understanding something very, very integral to uh, your paper and your research. The first of the two things is the title page. And uh, this is an example title page. The red uh, text is annotations. And so essentially what you should have is the uh, page number uh, preceded by a abbreviated title, one or two words. Uh, then you should have the running head, uh, then the uh, title, your name, and your institution. This is what an APA style paper should look like. Uh, the uh, page number and abbreviated title, that should be in the header of your paper, so you should learn how to use the uh, word processor you're using, so you can put that in the header. Uh, and it should appear on every page of the paper, starting with page one, the title page. Running head only occurs on the uh, title page itself, and uh, it is uh, you know, not in the header. It's uh, just at the top of the page. So uh, students often ask, what's the difference between the, the running head uh, you know, or, and the uh, abbreviated title? Well, here's the official reason. Uh, the abbreviated title and page uh, number. Well, what happens if an editor drops your paper and drops it with somebody else's paper? They need to reorder it, so they need a page number, and they need to know which paper is which, so you need some type of abbreviated title. So that's why we have the uh, page number and uh, the abbreviated title. Running head is actually instructions to the typesetter if you uh, look at a research uh, you know, uh, publication, a research journal, you'll notice that there is a short uh, title running uh, at the top of the uh, pages of the journal article. This is called a running head or a running header. And so the running head is instructions for the typesetter. Of course, uh, for you, uh, your paper is not going to be typeset yet. Uh, so that's not really that important, but definitely the uh, page number and the short title is important. Now, moving on to the title of the title page, here's what the APA says about titles. Should summarize the main idea, be a concise statement of the main topic, identify the variables or theoretical issues under investigation, be fully explanatory when standing alone, and avoid words which serve no purpose, such as a study of, the effects of, an investigation of, things like that. Uh, oftentimes, the title is the only thing that a researcher may run across, and so the title needs to stand alone, but also convey a great deal of information. Uh, now, that's what the APA says about titles. Let me go one further and one better. Uh, the easiest way to write a title uh, is in this format, the independent variable on the dependent variable, or the independent variables on the dependent variables. And this is short, there's no useless words, and it stands alone, and it conveys the important issues. So that is the format that I require all my students to do their titles in. Now, this requires that you know what your IVs and DVs are, and often students aren't aware of that or unaware, are not aware of how important they are. So this is the important issue on the title page. Now you're starting to really think about, well, what is my experiment, what's my IV, what's my DV? So let me give you some examples of some good titles. I had articles laying around. Uh, effects of transformed letters on reading speed. Transformed letters on reading speed. So we know the IVs are transformed letters, or just one IV, and the DV is reading speed. Uh, you know, even though uh, the APA style guide says don't use you know 
uh, empty words like effect of, it's still there. Uh, evidence for a collective intelligence factor in the performance of groups. So even though we have some useless words such as evidence for uh, and we don't have on, we can still figure out what the IV and the DV is. Uh, the dependent variable is the performance in group, the IV is collective intelligence factor. Effects of attire, alcohol, and gender on perceptions of date rape. Again, now we know uh, the IVs and the DVs. Uh, the attribution of responsibility in acquaintance rapes involving ecstasy. Again, we know what the IVs are, attribution of respons the DV is attribution of responsibility, uh, and the IV is something about acquaintance rapes, some variable there. Uh, and then we have other articles, a wandering mind is a happy mind. Uh, this actually tells uh, us a great deal about the study. Uh, the study was about the fact that when your mind wanders, uh, you are less happy than you are when your mind is focused. So we do have the IVs and the DVs. And finally, psychometric properties of computerized mobile phone method for assessing mood in daily life. Uh, that tells you exactly what the article is about. Second trivial but important thing is the end of the introduction. At the end of the introduction, uh, there should be several things. I'm talking about the end of the introduction section right before the method section. First off, you should have a overview or preview of the methodology. Uh, then you should have a hypothesis, your hypotheses. Uh, so uh, that's the way most introductions should end. And if you look at any article, you'll see that in some way or another, this occurs towards the end of the introduction. Uh, your, your hypotheses should describe uh, the IVs and the DVs and should be the same IVs and DVs in your uh, you know, title. And you should point out the relationship between your literature review and the hypotheses. Uh, ending your introduction this way helps you meet the goals of the introduction section. And the goals are to show that your hypothesis deserves to be tested. That is, why should we go through the trouble of testing this hypothesis? Why is this experiment important? That's something that you should argue for in your introduction. And then the other goal is show that the methods you chose uh, are the right ones to test your hypothesis. So again, out of all the different ways, the methods that you could use, the operational definitions, the procedures, etc., that you could use to test your hypothesis, why are you using this one? Those are the two goals of the introduction section. And ending with a preview of the methodology and the hypotheses, really it's good writing and it meets, you know, helps you meet the goals of the introduction. Let me give you an example. Uh, this is a paper, uh, hypotheses. So they start out with a section at the end of the introduction called hypotheses. Hypothesis one was derived from the social identity theory's positive distinctiveness tenet, and you can read the rest of that. Pause the, you know, pause the uh, movie, and pause the movie to read the rest of this. This example meets many, uh, if not all, of the points that I mentioned that you should have at the end of your introduction section. Now, I talk to students about this, I try to encourage them to do this, or remind them of the two goals of the introduction section, and that really doesn't seem to help. So I think the best thing I can do is to actually require something. Uh, at the end of your introduction, uh, you will include a subsection headed the current study, or I think like in some of the uh, you know, instructions I say the present study. Same thing, doesn't matter. Uh, it will begin with a one paragraph description of your research method. Uh, it will have subsections headed, hypothesis one, etc., each subsection for each hypothesis. Uh, each subsection will contain a hypothesis and a description of the theoretical basis of the hypothesis. That is, it will have the hypothesis, this group will do better than that group on this DV, and then why do I expect this group to do better? And using this format will really force you uh, into the correct style uh, for writing well in APA. 
Let's look at example one, which is really the only example I have. So the current study, and that's in the appropriate uh, you know, level of heading for a APA if it's coming at the end of the introduction. The variables of interest in the present study are blah, 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 blah. You know, stop the show, read that. You'll notice that this is a very good overview introduction of the upcoming methodology. And then as a uh, subsection, hypothesis one, notice that's in the appropriate level of heading for APA. Uh, so first off, we need the uh, hypothesis. Females will report a greater likelihood of seeking social support than will males. And this is a good hypothesis. It is uh, directional, and it's making a prediction, and it's referring to the independent and dependent variables. And then the theoretical prediction. This prediction is based upon the results of both Nodler et al. and Berta et al. Recall that Nodler et al. found that females reported a greater likelihood of seeking help than would males, and Berta et al. observed that females had higher levels of reported social support than males. And uh, Nodler and Berdler, Ber uh, Berta are discussed at length in the introduction in the literature review. Uh, so therefore what you're doing is just referring back to other sections of the introduction, that is the literature review, and you know, getting the reader to recall the arguments you were making there. So it really does tie things up very well. So those are the two things. That and maybe this is what a running head is. Tony Harrison, it's an outrage.